Dave O here from the Axiom Body Piercing Studio in Des Moines, Iowa. And coming up next, what you should know before getting a navel piercing done. That's right, pre-piercing navel consultation. Also, another thing coming up is just for this video is a discount for all you local people. $15 off. Watch the video. I'll let you know about it later on. So stick around. First off, a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm doing this in October of 2018. If you've gotten conflicting aftercare instructions from your piercer or ideas or what have you, consult them before you switch to anything that I'm suggesting at this day and age. Things change, new information comes available, and people have different ideas on it. So talk to them about it and see what their discussion is. Average healing time. Navels are one of the longest healing piercings there are, taking anywhere from six months to a year to heal completely. And when we say heal, it's the period of time when the piercing is still an open wound. What it's going to take. Basically, you're going to be doing things like hot soaks with warm water and sea salt twice daily. Also, cleaning in the shower twice daily with an antimicrobial or germicidal soap um, or a mild antibacterial liquid soap that's fragrance-free um, and moisturizer-free. Cross-contamination prevention. Common systems. Washing your hands before you handle it. No oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on near around the piercing until it heals. Keeping your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels. Not submerging the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. You also want to keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. Because of the location of the piercing, you do want to avoid abuse to the piercing. The biggest things you want to be concerned about is, of course, do not sleep on the piercing while it's healing. Make sure you're sleeping on your side or your back and not causing any abuse or pressure on the piercing. The other thing is you want to avoid clothing that has a high waistband. They seem to have come back in style, those high-waisted women's pants. You do not want to wear them at all during the healing process. You want to wear something that's either loose-fitting or something that has a waistband that's below it. Things you, can, you should consider before getting a navel piercing. The first one being is sports, activities, or anything that may require you to remove the jewelry, medical, uh, medical procedures that you might have coming up or they're going to make you take the jewelry out. The other thing is if you're planning on uh, starting a family and you're female and you're planning on eventually becoming pregnant. The thing with navel piercings is they can survive a pregnancy in some cases, usually switching to maybe a more flexible piece of jewelry may allow that piercing to stay in during the whole pregnancy, but the reality of the situation is your body goes through a vast change, especially in that part of your anatomy. So it can shift or move during the, during the pregnancy, and then once it's over with, you're not going to like the outcome of where it's at. So I really wouldn't advise if you're planning on getting pregnant in the next I don't know, ten, uh, three to four years, it might be better to wait until you're done having children. Or if you're okay with wearing it till then and then taking it out when you become pregnant, that's fine too. But do take that into consideration. Another thing you want to consider is if you're going on vacation. Most people when they go on vacation, they tend to go to warmer climates or places where they can swim. That's part of their leisure activity. If you are planning on trip, uh, going on a trip in the next six months, or you're planning on going to a foreign country especially, I would advise waiting until you get back from the vacation before getting it pierced. It's just going to be easier, plus who wants to deal with a healing piercing the whole time they're on vacation? Health reasons that you may not want to get it done. Some things you need to be concerned about is if you're diabetic, hemophilia, have blood clotting problems, are anemic, and of course if you're pregnant. All of those things are not, are going to either impair your body's ability to heal or could cause risks or problems during the piercing itself or shortly after or even during the healing process. If you're pregnant, a lot of people don't understand this one, but there's a lot of strain on your immune system. 
your body's working extra hard to build another life. So it's advisable to do it after the pregnancy is over um, instead of dealing with that through. And this particular piercing, I would advise at all considering getting it done if you are pregnant. The other issue is, is that it is possible that the stress of getting the piercing could cause a miscarriage. So we don't want to take that risk, and I suggest that you don't either. Another thing you want to be concerned about or talk to your piercer about before getting it done is if you have any allergic reactions to things like provodyne iodine, also known as betadine, surgilube, latex, rubbing alcohol, um, or the material that the jewelry is made out of. If you have any metal sensitivities or you have any allergies, you should discuss that with your piercer before you get it done. Medication. That's another thing you need to consider. If you're any type, on any type of uh, controlled or uncontrolled substance, including blood thinners, um, heart medications, um, you probably want to wait until they have passed through your system. Uncontrolled substances, in controlled substances, what we're talking about is alcohol, and we're also talking about drugs. Even though a lot of people think that it's going to help with their anxiety and it's going to make the piercing easier, the reality of the situation is most recreational drugs tend to amplify the, your emotional state and your emotional experience, including al in, and alcohol does too. The other issue is, is it can affect how the blood clots, which could be a major issue. What you should do to prepare to get an able piercing? First thing, get a full night's rest the night before. Well rested, reduces that stress level, makes it a little bit more comfortable. The other thing is, is go out and eat. Have a full meal before you come in so that your blood sugar is at a good level. Some things I would suggest not doing, don't get drunk the night before. When you're hungover, a lot of the alcohol is still in your system, so the chances are is that you're gonna bleed more. And it's, if you're not feeling good, it's just going to make the experience worse. So make sure you're kind of well rested and in a good mood before you come in. Also, if you have a friend or someone who is supportive, bring them along with you. Things you want to pick up beforehand. Sea salt, which you can find in the baked goods aisle of any good grocery store. It's also good in cooking. Adds a little bit of extra flavor and you don't have to use as much. Distilled water, you can find it in the beverage aisle. If you can't find it there, check me to see the infant care section where they keep the baby formula. Um, if it's not there and you're at a large department store, it might be next to the uh, appliances where they keep the irons and humidifiers, etc. Antimicrobial or germicidal soap. Your best bet with that is you want something that's fragrance free, moisturizer free, doesn't have a lot of additives. And what I generally suggest is satin or proven. If you cannot locate that, um, sometimes you, you can find it in pharmacies, sometimes drugstores, but if you have issues re, uh, locating it, you need something until you can either order it online or what have you, I would suggest Dial Basic or Dial Gold antibacterial soap. You want to make sure that it's the basic, doesn't have any additional moisturizers, fragrances, or anything. Medicine cups. Since you're going to be doing soaks, you can do them with a shot glass or juice glass over and over again. However, it's my experience that if you don't clean them right away and you're not really diligent about cleaning the cup right immediately after you get done with the piercing, or done with the soaks, I should, not the piercing, the soaks, soaks, I tell you. You're not going to be piercing at home. That's a bad idea. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's my experience that if you don't, you're not really diligent cleaning those right away, the salt crystals will start to collect and deposit on the side of the glass. This can cause issues because it can harbor contaminants. So it's much easier just to buy those disposable plastic medicine cups and just use them and toss them immediately afterwards. Do not use them to heat up the, the water in the microwave. That's a bad idea. It will leach out uh, chemicals and all kinds of fun stuff that you don't want in your piercing. The other thing, plenty of clean paper towels. Uh, it's just nice to have a clean, easy source to dry off the piercing area after you're done cleaning it, um, maybe to use it during the soak so that you don't have to worry about it being contaminated and clean. So those are the basics for healing out a navel piercing. Um, if you have any questions or don't feel like I covered something, feel free to 
make a comment right down there below this video on the YouTube channel and I'll be happy to answer that question. If you're watching this somewhere else and you're like, uh, I can't make comments on this, feel free to get in contact with me by email. Um, that will be listed on whatever page you're watching this on. Now on to the special. I'm running a special from the beginning of November, so November 1 through November 30th. I believe it's 30th. If there's 31 days, then it'll be through the 31st. I, don't, like, I haven't really thought this out too much. What we're going to do is go ahead and subscribe to our channel, like this video, and make a comment on the piercing that you would like to get. And when you come in, mention it to me and get... $15 off the overall cost of your piercing or piercings. If you need more details on that, I'll put a link to the main page that gives all the disclaimer and all the fun stuff that you need to know as far as that. For those that are outside the Des Moines, Iowa area, sorry, can't help you out with that $15 uh, discount, but you probably do want to subscribe to this. Uh, we do, on this channel, on a regular basis, I post educational videos about body piercing. Also, we have the question and answer, which is about body piercing and tattooing. We're the three uh, major artists here at Skin Kitchen of the Axiom sit down and discuss at length some of the more common questions about um, body art that people ask and give, us, and give you guys kind of our insight and that insider kind of look at things. Also, we do post weekly uh, the updates, which is the studio update, where we have uh, Jack and Wesley's Tattoos of the Week, and all kinds of other fun stuff, and kind of what I've been up to, new merchandise that the Skin Kitchen has, um, and all kinds of fun stuff. So, subscribe is what I'm saying. Otherwise, you won't know. Also, hit that notification bell so that we get, that you get that notification on your phone or other device to let you know, hey, uh, they just posted something. You should check it out. Other than that, you guys have a good day, and I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future.